I think any parent out there would say that giving birth is probably one of the top 10 most stressful experiences. And that's without being somebody who's giving birth in a foreign country or during a global pandemic. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Ashton and I'm one third of the Black Forest family. Here in our YouTube channel, we include all kinds of content about living, working, studying in Germany, and traveling abroad. So today I'm going to be talking to you about what is, without a doubt, the most popular blog post on our entire website. And that's the 10 things I learned giving birth in Germany as a foreigner. Now, I think any parent out there who had a child within the last, honestly, year and a half is part of the camp of pandemic babies, and our son Jack is no exception to that rule. And honestly, I think being somebody who is not from Germany, giving birth away from friends and family is already stressful enough, but tack on a global pandemic and things got interesting. I learned so much about what it was like to be in that situation, and I'm here today to share with you the 10 things that I learned. So, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I learned was that, unfortunately for me, <laughs> you can't just schedule an induction in Germany simply because you want it to be. Now, some of you out there are probably thinking, oh, I just love pregnancy. It's been beautiful from start to finish. But maybe there's a few of you out there that are a little bit more like me. And honestly, at the last trimester, you were just wanting it to end. Honestly, pregnancy is a beautiful process, but I found myself at 38 weeks pregnant, trying to do whatever I could to speed things along. I actually found myself doing laps up and down the Schlossberg term, just outside of Old Town, trying to induce my own labor at 38 weeks pregnant. And you better believe I put that on Strava. But regardless of this story, it brings up a great point. And that's just that I found from speaking with my midwife and my OBGYN that in Germany, it really isn't customary to schedule induction simply because you just kind of feel like it being done and wanting to get it over with. Of course, if you have medical reasons why you need to schedule induction, that's something separate completely. Like I mentioned, for me, I was approaching 42 weeks and for a couple of other health-related reasons, my doctor finally said, yeah, I, I think it's time. The second thing I was surprised to learn about giving birth in Germany was that alternative pain medications are actually widely utilized in Germany. Now, my labor went by a little slowly, so the midwives in the hospital actually tried a number of different methods to try to help things along a little bit more naturally. And for me, that was getting in the bathtub, trying candles, aromatherapy, and music. But I've actually read other blogs from women who have given birth in Germany that mention that they got things like acupuncture in the general hospital in Germany, which I think is fantastic. And if that works for you, all power to you. Now, that's not to say that if you don't want more conventional pain medications like pharmaceuticals or a epidural, that you're not able to get that in Germany. In fact, I ended up waving the white flag after about 12 hours of contractions every two minutes wanting the epidural myself. Um, but it is nice to know that if you're somebody who wants to try to go the natural method, that you don't have to do extraordinary measures to seek these things out your hospital may have those standard as part of their care that they provide for you. So make sure to talk to them about that during your birthing class or part of the registration process before you give birth. Now, the third thing I learned from giving birth in Germany is to bring snacks. Okay, listen, I had a great experience in the hospital in Germany. But if there was one critique that I have is that I wouldn't really recommend going to the German hospitals for their cuisine. It was fine and all, but especially the dinner was particularly light. And for me, I found that the hunger that I had about three o'clock in the morning while I was breastfeeding my son 
was like nothing I had ever experienced and I was starving. So I had actually packed along a few snacks for my husband during the birthing process that he didn't end up using, but those became a lifeline for me. All right, so the fourth thing that I learned was, yes, in fact, the doctors do speak English in the majority of German hospitals, particularly if you give birth at one of the major university institutions. Now, normally, I really try my best to speak German in most situations, but I don't really think giving birth qualifies as a normal situation. When you're stressed or in pain, it's really difficult to dig deep and find the right vocabulary or the words you're trying to think of. And so having somebody that you can communicate with in your native language, particularly if that's English, was just really helpful to have. So the fifth thing that I learned when giving birth in Germany, it was refreshing that women are actually encouraged to stay longer for recovery in the hospital. Now, with speaking with friends and family who've given birth in the US, it's totally common to go home 24 hours after giving birth. And maybe after a C-section, that might be two to three days. In Germany, however, staying two to three days is typical after just a standard vaginal delivery. With a C-section, you could stay five to seven days. Now, that's not to say you have to stay. You can go at any time. But I found it really refreshing that after my own C-section that I ended up needing to have for emergency purposes, that I could actually take the time to rest and recover after my surgery and continue to get help and advice from the midwives and the doctors that were there on staff. Now, the other benefit about staying at least two to three days after giving birth is that actually the very first checkup that your baby will have, called the U1, or the U1 in English, actually occurs there at the hospital. So as a new mom, when you are physically recovering from one of the most major medical moments of your life, you don't have to pack everything up and head over to your new pediatrician or your Kinderarzt. Instead, that actually takes place at the hospital and you don't have to worry about it when you get home, which can be such a relief. Now, the sixth thing I learned was actually that they have a dedicated consultant at the hospitals in Germany that help you with all of the paperwork that's needed with your new baby, which is a complete relief, especially if you are an expat or an immigrant in this country. You've probably realized by now that living in Germany comes with a hefty amount of paperwork and having a professional there who is dedicated to helping you apply for all of the appropriate birth certificates, for registering your new baby, or even applying for their Steuernummer ID or their tax ID number, handling that all before you ever leave the hospital is such a great service that they provide. Now, this will mean that as a new parent, you're gonna have to do a little bit of preparing ahead of time to make sure you bring along the appropriate paperwork in order to fill out the forms needed. Now, if you're an expat or an immigrant, that's gonna mean your residence permits, your city registration documents, your passports, as well as standard things like your marriage license and your birth certificate. Now, if you have any questions about what these documents are and what you need, again, we've written an entire blog post on this topic, so I highly suggest that you check it out if you have additional questions. But of course, if there's something else you want more information about, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back and answer those. Now, the next thing I learned about giving birth in Germany was that Jack actually stayed in my room with me in a bassinet for my entire hospital stay. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, duh, that's standard practice, but I actually found that many of my family and friends back home found this quite surprising that there wasn't just a large nursery that they sent all of the babies to. I loved the fact that I got to spend that extra time bonding with my baby and having him right next to me at all times. And of course, that's not to say that if you don't need a little bit of extra help, that somebody's not there to help you, that somebody's not there to give it to you in your time of need. In fact, I found that my very first night with Jack, I was just full blown exhausted. I had been up for 48 hours prior giving birth and no sleep. So being alone and very sleep deprived, one of the nurses came into my room and asked if she would like for me to take Jack for a few hours while I could get some rest 
which was wonderful and totally needed. Okay, so number eight, and that's that a standard room is a shared room in the majority of hospitals in Germany. Now, for some of our American viewers, this might take you a little bit by surprise because in the US, a private room is standard. But in Germany, it's very typical to have a roommate who will have another little baby along with them on the side. Now, I know that speaking personally, Jonathan and I really debated heavily going into the birth as whether or not we wanted to have a standard room that's shared or a private room called a family room. Now, we currently are on the public healthcare system and what comes standard for us is a shared room. If we wanted one of these family rooms, we would have to pay extra for it. On the one hand, this can be such a wonderful benefit because you'll have both parents there to help during the middle of the night, taking care of the baby, and having some privacy for those special family moments. Now, if you are somebody who's interested in a private room, if you already have private health insurance, this may be a benefit that's already included for you. However, if you have public health care, you can pay extra for this. However, it's gonna range anywhere from 100 to 200 euros a night. Basically, it's like paying for a hotel stay. So make sure to talk this over with your hospital administrators or midwives during the registration process. Okay, so the next thing I learned is, oh, I really hope this doesn't make me sound like a privileged Westerner, but things like Wi-Fi and TV might be considered extras that you have to pay for as part of your stay in a German hospital. Now, at least for me, I found this really surprising because in this day and age, Wi-Fi can be found in public parks, in cafes, in grocery stores for free, but in a hospital setting, it's an extra perk. And granted, it's not that expensive to pay for, but for me, it was actually something that I found to be really important. I'm not from Germany, my family isn't here, plus I'm giving birth during a global pandemic where my husband can't even visit with us for more than a couple of hours. Having internet access and being able to video chat with my family members was honestly one of the most comforting things for me during the first couple days after giving birth. Jonathan could see his son, my mom and dad could see their first grandson, and being able to connect with them in that first postpartum period was really such a wonderful thing. Now, again, this is not a big fee, and it's not something that I think anybody should stress over in any stretch of the imagination, but it's just something to be aware of before you go in, particularly if you don't have family members by your side and it's something that you too feel is important to have. Okay, last but not least, number 10, the one thing I learned during giving birth in Germany as a foreigner was how important it was that I trust my healthcare providers. Now, for many of you, I imagine, giving birth is going to be probably one of the more stressful days. And if you're type A like I am, needing to feel some sort of control over that environment can help alleviate some of that stress. I know going into giving birth, I was really worried about what my experience was going to be like. I couldn't tour the hospital wing because of the pandemic. My doctor who was going to be helping me give birth, I'd never met before because in Germany, your OBGYN is actually not the doctor who helps you give birth in the hospital. Now for me, I found that from start to finish, everyone who I came into contact with at my hospital in Germany was fantastic. From the midwives, the nurses, the doctors, the administrators, everyone was so helpful and so kind. But more than that, they were very, very competent at their jobs. And in moments of high stress or emergency situations, they were the calm in the storm that I know that I desperately needed. And so with that sentimental feel good ending, I think it's a good place to stop. And I would love it if you have questions or birth stories of your own, please share them in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, if you liked what you saw today, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time.